Hello and welcome to another edition of Eco's Fair. I am Mary Kanu. Now, Nigeria is used to seasonal flooding, but this year has been significantly worse than usual. The government has said unusually heavy rains and climate change are to blame. The emergency release of excess water from dams, both in Nigeria and in neighboring Cameroon, is said to be another key factor causing devastating flooding. Experts have also said poor planning and infrastructure have exacerbated the damage as the disaster has affected 27 of Nigeria's 36 states. And Nigeria's meteorological agency has also warned that the flooding could continue until the end of November. More than 600 people have died in the worst flooding Nigeria has seen in a decade, while about 1.3 million people have been displaced and more than 200,000 homes have been destroyed. Now, to help us better understand why Nigeria has suddenly been hit with this disaster is environmental expert Ari Babu Suleiman. It's good to have you join me on the program, Suleiman. Now, uh, let me ask you that ever since the flood disaster hits Nigeria, there have been speculations about climate change being one of the factors responsible, as well as the water release from Cameroon's Lagdo Dam. But how much of this is true? Is it climate change or the Lagdo Dam? Um, they are one and the same. They are... Um... They are same, different side of same coin, actually, uh, because the Lagdo Dam that was released is released because um, climate, climate, Cameroon also received excessive rain rainfall, uh, which the dam could no longer hold. And of course, the dam had to be released on September the 13th. Uh, but, you know, like the Minister of Water Resources said, that is just a, a little portion of what hit us in Nigeria. We also received our own fair share of rain. Now, it's not only Lagdo Dam that was released. Tika Dam in Kano was also released. Um, uh, if you remember, the flooding started actually in Bauchi. Uh, so it has nothing to do, that has nothing to do with Lagdo Dam. The Lagdo Dam release started to manifest along the Benue River uh, uh, coast. Um, so you saw communities first in Adamawa and then up to Nasarawa and then Benue. Uh, being flooded as a result of that. But uh, by and large, what is happening is that we're experiencing um, a pattern of rainfall that has not been hit at all. Uh, but, but due to that climate change, we're having some time, amount of rainfall that ought to spread for about two months could come down in three days. Uh, unfortunately, both our rivers and dams and other water uh, containment systems uh, become overwhelmed as a result of this. And this is not peculiar only to Nigeria. We saw what's happening in, in parts of Europe. We saw what's happening in, uh, in Pakistan, in some other parts of West Africa. So as climate change continues to uh, change the way our weather pattern is, um, we are going to be experiencing things, not things that we have not experienced before, but in uh, proportion that seem to overwhelm our uh, preparedness. And this is where we need to focus our attention on. Uh, there will always be this kind of flooding. There will always be um, every amount of rainfall that will lead to flooding. But how much impact it has on us and how much disaster we witness is a function of our preparedness uh, and our response. Now, Suleiman, sorry to caught you here, but uh, I know the situation is bad, but would you say the worst is yet to come? And uh, is this, uh, we can target a natural disaster. Is this something that you think can be prevented? So we cannot prevent the rains from falling the way they have fell. Uh, that is beyond us because that is the whole essence of climate change. There are going to be extreme weather events you see, climate change on its own scientifically will happen whether human interfere in nature or not. What we are witnessing is that we are accelerating the rate of change beyond what our planet is able to counterbalance. Not only that, we are also reducing the ability of our planet to counterbalance some of the extreme things that we are witnessing. For instance, we have a lot of deforestation. Uh, all our green areas, all the uh, all our uh, wetlands are, are, have been built up. So these are places that naturally will contain such excessive water for us and reduce the impact on us. We are, um, so we are we we are largely the reason why we are experiencing. Uh, so if you ask me whether 
this amount of rainfall could be prevented? No. If you ask me whether flooding um, at this scale could be prevented, uh, it's, it's neither here nor there. But if you ask me whether the impact, whether the devastation, whether the loss of life, loss of livelihood, loss of crop, loss of animals, loss of properties could be minimized, yes, definitely we could have done much, much better. Now, how would you rate the response of the federal government to the flooding and displacement in the face of an even worse situation? Do you think there'll be a high level of survival rates in Nigeria? Oh, well, it, it, it's, it is tough. Um, because let's interrogate that question, the response of the federal government. It shouldn't be the response of the federal government only response of government uh, because the federal government will tell you that it's responding through NEMA um, and some of its agencies that is responding through the military. The Air Force has been uh, lifting relief materials in Bayelsa. Uh, but the problem is that most of the states in Nigeria do not have a standard um, emergency management agency. They just have something hard up. Except for Lagos, Kaduna, Boronu, and Abuja, all of them just have ad hoc. So the disaster risk reduction strategy for the states are not clear. And you know, local government and state governments are the ones directly involved in this um, situation. They are the first that, I mean, the rate at which the state governors quickly raised up their hands in surrender and calling on federal government is it, it's, it's astonishing. It, it's annoying. You know, so the preparedness is poor at the level of government across board. Uh, the federal government perhaps is even doing better. But um, if you want me to rate in terms of response, yes, it is equally poor. Um, this uh, flooding has been predicted earlier in the year. The projections about having massive flooding have been issued by NISA. NIMET had earlier predicted that there will be much rain this year. Uh, but you wonder what then did the Federal Ministry of Agri do in terms of making sure that farmers are able to... Because you remember, this flood hit us right at the big, at, as at where we are supposed to be doing the harvest for 2022. Perhaps, if we had this flood in mind, the, 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 the planting calendar for the year would have been adjusted. Perhaps, if we had this flood in mind, the varieties to be planted would have been adjusted. Perhaps, if we had this in mind would have um, advised some farmers, some uh, um, uh, level of people who engage in certain occupation or the other to have a rethink for the year so that we can minimize the loss. Because even for survivors, those who are dead, quite unfortunately, they are gone. Uh, but even those who survive may suffer more. Yeah, because people are totally displaced, their livelihoods totally lost, their properties totally lost. It's quite unfortunate. So government response is government response is not good enough. Nema, I believe, is a bit overwhelmed by this crisis because you hear the same agency in every state. Isn't that madness? This flood has affected over thirty states, and it's Nema, 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 with the state emergency management agencies just doing as if they are just there to assist, whereas they are supposed to be in the forefront. They are supposed to have their strategies, they are supposed to have their response plan activated even before NEMA comes in. And so we, we really have to have some frank conversation in this country. We really need to have some frank conversation. Uh, now, many Nigerians are only seeing the loss of lives and businesses and also damages to properties. But uh, as an environmentalist, how badly would you say the environment has been damaged? Uh, the environment is horribly damaged. Uh, it's horribly damaged. Um, because when you're talking about the environment, you also need to understand that um, the agriculture that we do is part of our environment. Um, you also have to understand that what we are witnessing, this level of flooding, is going to create some uh, public environmental crisis. Uh, there's going to be public health crisis which is an environmental issue, there's going to be serious sanitation issues. 
Don't forget, in Bayelsa, it's reported that this is even going to the extent of exhuming corpses from the graves. You know, uh, these are environmental pollution. Um, many, many companies whose um, um, inputs, whose, uh, whose uh, uh, primary inputs are toxic or have um, a polluting nature, and some of them are already over. Now we are not even taking stock of that. We don't even know what kind of chemicals are already going in with this flood to places where they shouldn't be going. So uh, we have not even taken stock, but definitely the environment is badly, badly hit by this. It, it, it's quite unfortunate. Like, the environment is quite badly. What, what yeah, mitigation methods do you think uh, the federal government can put in place to avoid a situation like this from reoccurring? I think even before we start, because the flood has not left, this flood may be with us till late in November. So we need to worry about people surviving right now. We need to worry about people having access to safe drinking water. Don't forget that, like we're talking about the impact on the environment, fresh water bodies have been inundated. Nobody will drink from this flood water that is passing by them. We're even talking about communities that didn't have access to fresh water to drink in the past. Now, this has compounded that we need to get water to people. We need to get people to safety. We need to provide security. I tell you, there are communities now where the level of theft has increased because those farmers that have lost everything, uh, some are invading the farms of some who still have uh, something left, or even their barnyard. It is as crazy as that uh, because it, it, it's not because these people are wicked. It's existential for them. They need to survive. People have lost a lot. We need to do psychosocial support uh, because this is traumatic, both for children and women and of also, of course, for the men. So we need to first help people out. We need to immediately put in place a containment plan. Now, food security is going to be impacted. We are moving into the dry season. Nigeria is not a country with very serious dry season farming. This year must be different. We must do serious dry season farming this year. So government needs to come to the aid of people to make that happen. This is the time to re re release food from the uh, from the natural natural um, grain reserves of the country. We need to help people to survive now. And then government should be talking to the various research institutions. Come up with varieties now that as soon as this flooding is abated, farmers can go back. We need to recover as a country. And government needs also to help with insurance. Most times when you have banks and uh, NILSA and all of them give loan to farmers and say they have insured, they only insure their money. They don't insure such that such farmers can return to those livelihoods. Uh, we really have a lot to do to help people during this flooding that has not left, immediately after it. And then as a nation, we now need to say, how can we ensure that never again will we be caught such unawares and never again will we survive this level of devastation. We are human beings and God has blessed us with, with intellect, with the resources, with the technology to be able to see this coming and to be able to reduce its impact on us. Hmm. Well, Ari Webu Suleiman, environmental expert, thank you for your time and your contribution. Thank you too. Well, we'll take a break here, but when we return, we'll be joined by a health expert as we look at the health implications of a third world country hit by flooding. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Well, on today's edition of the program, we are looking at the impact of the sudden flood on Nigerians. Well, joining me now to discuss the health implications of the flooding is Insia Basi Ekonem, a public health expert. Thank you very much for joining me. Now, Dr. Ekonem, uh, I want you to please paint a picture of the dangers we are in health-wise. Now, with the floods that have uh, swallowed up humans, houses and businesses. 
Uh, thank you very much, first of all, for having me. Uh, I would say that uh, the consequences or the devastating effect of the flood in most parts of Nigeria is extremely, extremely dangerous. Um, besides the destruction of lives, properties, and even the destruction of business and everything in most parts of the country of particular importance uh, by also state we've seen in some aspects of uh, these places dead bodies flowing floating on top of water cemeteries have been blown open by water and um, decomposing bodies of humans who were buried many years ago some months ago and are floating on water and unfortunately people who are stranded in this flood so we've seen um, decomposing bodies of humans that were buried so many years ago uh, in uh, some parts of Bayelsa state even in some parts of uh, uh, Kogi state and Taraba state unfortunately exposure of humans to these um, decomposing uh, dead bodies is quite disastrous to the health. We've also learned that some humans, or some Nigerians living in those areas do not have access to water supply. And so their own water supply is actually the flood that has been contaminated with the decomposing human bodies in cemeteries. I mean, the extent of the effect is quite devastating. Unfortunately, we've seen little to no commitment, not even a single commitment from the federal government. Rather, the people in the country are being blamed for not relocating or moving themselves and their families from the flooding, flooded communities. And this is in, on the heels of the fact that not even a single camp was created by the federal government. The negative effect of this is that we are going to be seeing an epidemic of diseases like cholera, amoebic dysentery, just name it. These are some of the things that we are going to experience. In addition to that, we are seeing a lot of farmland being awashed by the flood. Food, crops, everything has been destroyed by the crops, by the flood. And this means that we are going to have an untold food hardship like um, the type in Yemen, Afghanistan, and other war-torn countries because food production has greatly declined and we have already seen some of those effects in the cost of foods in the country. Unfortunately, malnutrition, which is one of the drivers of death among young and old people, is going to begin to set in. Nigerians are barely feeding a day now with the flooded communities, which are basically the communities that produce food to Nigerians, this is going to be um, such, an, a, such a terrible experience because most Nigerians now may not be able to afford food and other commodities to maintain livelihood. So honestly, uh, the, the, the consequence of the flood is untold. Unfortunately, this is a time when we need the federal government and other relevant agencies to come in, support us with food supplies and all of that. But we are not seeing this, so we are going to see, on one hand, epidemic, disease outbreak. On the other hand, acute malnutrition among Nigerians. This is really, really, really untold. Well, uh, doctor, in the last year... A lot of uh, health workers, nurses, doctors have moved in droves to Asia, Europe and other parts of the world. Well, how does this compound the problem of flooding, seeing that the country might soon witness a rise in infections due to the floods? Uh, the, the, the truth is, when you look at um, epidemic outbreaks, you consider um, places like um, toilets, whether it's pit toilet or whether it's a modern, you know, water closet. And you consider the fact that soakaways are now being awashed by the flood. So you begin to see that all sort of, all manner of debris, all manner of microorganisms are making direct contact with humans. I mean, you can only imagine the extent of um, disease outbreak that we're looking at. 
Unfortunately, um, this is more like the worst flooding that we've seen in the country in the last decade. And I can only imagine the extent of uh, uh, disease, disease outbreak. I just hope that Nigeria, the Ministry of Health and other relevant uh, NGOs in Nigeria, agencies, departments, are ready to tackle the aftermath of the flood. But unfortunately, we are seeing a federal government that is absolutely nonchalant about the concerns of the people. Uh, we, we want to use this opportunity to call on uh, international agencies because it seems like the federal government is not helping. So right now, we need to depend on foreign donors, philanthropic organizations to come to our aid, to provide so, uh, succor to people that have been, that have been uh, that are victims of flood. Because this is the only way we can actually examine the extent of uh, damage uh, among these people, the extent of uh, uh, disease outbreak within these uh, communities, and perhaps provide preventive or curative uh, approach towards tackling some of the epidemics that would result from this uh, calamity that has befallen us uh, in our communities. Uh, still talking about this calamity that has been falling us uh, in our communities, we can see that hospitals have been submerged. Even doctors are scared for their safety. So how does the government handle a spread of infectious diseases in uh, these affected communities? Or what can residents do to help themselves in such a situation? Well, in, 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 in better communities, in sunnier climates, you begin to see government initiating what we call evacuation pro protocols. We bring in a helicopter to airlift people from the affected zones to safer zones where they can have the IDP camps, uh, where they will be assessed, uh, because um, we, are, we are looking at um, uh, a deployment of what we call emergency preparedness and response plan by the NCDC and other relevant uh, organizations to access the number of persons who have may, may have been exposed to some of the uh, pathogenic microorganisms uh, within the flood, flooded areas. Uh, of course, when we are able to make this assessment, we can probably initiate um, you know, uh, management protocols uh, where we, pre first of all, identify people who have been infected with these infectious diseases and then look at ways we can treat them and provide maybe vaccination services for those who have not been infected to prevent them from getting infection, uh, being infected with some of these pathogens. We need to also activate, you know, provision of food supplies to these people so that they, uh, some of them have been stranded, they have not eaten for so many days now, they need to be fed. We, we need to declare an emergency. And it's, it's, so, it's so sad that at a time like this, our president, President Muhammad Buhari, is not concerned at all with what is going on. Uh, at this time, in other climates, we would have declared a state of emergency in, across all the states where this uh, flood um, calamity has happened and ensure that uh, relevant agencies are on their toes to ensure that people are taken to safe zones, first of all, and then their health status is critically accessed and then management and prevention, pre prevention protocols are immediately uh, you know, rolled out to ensure that we can limit the number of deaths. We have, we have over 600 deaths already. We need to limit the number of deaths. We need to prevent person-to-person -person transmission as a result of exposure to some of the pathogenic microorganisms that has made contact with humans in the course of the flood. I think it is a, a multi-dimensional, multi-stakeholder, and of course, cross-functional um, protocol or approach that would help us to ensure that th those infected with these diseases within the flooded communities don't transmit these diseases to others who were not infected. I think it, it requires a lot of attention. It requires a lot of commitment from the government and other relevant agencies within and outside Nigeria to ensure that we limit the, uh, or we contain the possible epidemic that arises from the flood uh, in these communities. 
Now, we've seen that Nigeria is heading towards its harvesting season and, well, 84,000 hectares of land has been lost and the agricultural sector, we know for a while now, has been hit with insecurity challenges. Now, the flood disaster has also worsened the situation. You mentioned that we might see a rise in malnutrition, but somehow, do you think there will be a recovery from this? Well, um, I can say categorically that with regards to malnutrition, it might take us a while um, to be able to, uh, you know, um, ameliorate this situation because, uh, like you said, thousands of uh, acres of land have been awashed, and most of these lands being uh, uh, lands that have been previously called cultivated. Some of them have been cultivated and the plants have been washed away. Of course, we are going to see a high level of malnutrition following food scarcity. And uh, it might take us a while to be able to uh, ameliorate the situation. And for what, 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 what is important to us right now is to ensure that uh, the epidemic, because that kills faster. I mean, with, compared to malnutrition, epidemic kills faster. We are looking at a wide range, I mean, a very uh, uh, wide range of uh, epidemic that, in fact, we, the list is endless that may come as a result of uh, this flood. So I think the first thing we should do is to ensure that we uh, tackle the epidemic that may uh, arise as a result of the flood, and then of course look at how we can pro 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 provide food. So we have some storage um, silos somewhere in Nigeria. We have grains mm -hmm. and all other, all, the, all, all other food storage in Nigeria. We need to open up those food storage we need to ensure that we provide food for those who have been displaced. We need to, uh, you know, reintegrate them back into the society. Uh, for the properties that have been lost, we need to probably, uh, you know, provide succor, I mean, for these people. We might also need to do a psychological examination because a lot of people who have, have to lose everything, including their loved ones due to the flood, may be experiencing severe uh, trauma uh, as a result of the flood. Uh, we need to provide that services to them. And we also need to ensure that they are, you know, fully integrated into the society. We provide camps for them uh, while we look forward to ensuring that uh, we take necessary steps to make sure that uh, we, we, we reduce the effect of the flooding. I, I think what is also very important for us is that we as Nigerians, we, we, we are made of federating states. We need to call on other states to accommodate some of the people. Like people, the entire Bielsa has been awashed. We need to look at how river states and other neighboring states can bring them in to ensure that they have uh, a, a place they can at least put up for now until the situation gets better. But honestly, we are looking at a very dark situation with very, very severe consequences. And I feel that it is time for the federal government to step in rather than play blame games. Because it's absolutely appalling to see the federal government that's supposed to come in, pick up these people, look for where they can be kept, feed them, assess their health status, and provide health care services to ensure that they, 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 we, we reduce the number of deaths among these people. Unfortunately, the government is playing uh, blame games, which is not going to help us. We need to make sure that we address this matter headlong. And also, on the long term, we must ensure that we address the issues because this issue has, been, has, has happened before. In 2012, we had this issue. And unfortunately, after over 10 years, nothing has been done about it. We need to be more proactive. We need to be pragmatic. Because Nigerian lives go when things like this happen. We have lost over 600 souls. We need to make sure that we help prevent more souls from going, from dying as a result of the infection, as a result of, uh, you know, the calamity, the food uh, malnutrition and all of, all, all of that. We need to ensure that we take care of the people who have been uh, victims of this rather than play bl blame games. Hmm. All right. Now, Insia Basi, Ekanem, public health expert, thank you for your time and your contribution. Well, on that note, we call it a wrap on today's edition of the program. Thank you for watching. I am Mary Kanu.